What's up guys, it's Andrew coming back at you guys once again with another video. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the um, Apex Evolution 4 hammer kit for a KL frame revolver. I just happen to have this um, 986 that I'm going to be putting this in. This is going to be a steel challenge gun so I'm going to be mounting a dot on it as well today using the, uh, not sure how it's pronounced, but Al Ching gun parts or Alkin or however they say that but it's basically their um, their mount and this one happens to be for the hollow sun so we're putting a hollow sun 407 co on there today I don't know if you guys can see the dot in there or not it's actually a ring dot um, I've used this on a couple other guns and I really I really like this dot so that's the one we're going with today so let me go ahead and grab some tools and we'll get this thing taken apart. All right, so first of all, you've seen that I've already removed the grips and I removed the sight. There's not a whole lot to taking the sights off, just basically removing however many screws you've got, whether it's two or three, and then just removing the one from the grip and sliding it off. Once you've done that, you can now actually disassemble the pistol. Um, I would always advise finding the proper sized flathead screw driver to uh, remove the screws. That way you don't damage them and you don't want to damage or scratch up your side plate. First off, we're going to go ahead and back this screw out. Before making this video, I did do a, a trigger pull test and um, I was getting about seven pounds, 15 ounces on the trigger. So that's where we're at right now with the trigger. This may or may not come out. Um, mine just so happens will come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. If yours won't, you can just leave it in there and once we get the side plate off, it won't be a problem getting it out. Next, what we're gonna do, we're going to remove these three screws. And like I said, once again, make sure you've got the proper size flathead. You don't want to damage your side plate by scratching it up. And you also don't want to damage the head of these screws because they are flathead screws. All right, once you've gotten them loosened up, you can go ahead and take them out of the gun. Be mindful that this one is the one that goes in the front because it's got this little plunger right on the end of it and that's what keeps your cylinder in. Set that one to the side. I like to keep track of which ones are which just to make sure that they go back in the same hole they came out of. So there's the second screw. And there's a the third one. All right, now, I never advise prying against this side plate. Um, you shouldn't have any problems just taking your screwdriver, hitting this thing, and it should just come out just like that. You should never have to pry on your side plate. Be mindful not to damage this portion right here. Once that comes out, your hand's gonna come out and now you can see the inside of your gun. The very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be removing this portion right here. There's a spring inside here that keeps, this is your trigger return spring and housing, and that's what returns the trigger forward. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that out. The way I like to do it is just take a flathead screwdriver and get up under it and then pry it up. Now be mindful that spring's gonna wanna fly out of the gun. So as we're doing this, I'm gonna put my finger over the end to capture this spring. Now if you're installing the same kit that I am, you can go ahead and pull this out and set it aside.
All right, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and pull our cylinder out just so it's out of the way. Drop the cylinder and remove it. All right, at this point, you're gonna to wanna to pull the hand back out of the way so you can pull your trigger up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a flat head, gonna pry it back. It doesn't take a whole lot of force. Hold it back with your thumb while pushing upward on the trigger. And it comes right out there just like that. We're not gonna have to take this apart any further so we can set it aside. Now that that's been removed, you can remove your hammer. You're gonna have to pull back on your cylinder release so that you can pull your hammer back. Just slightly. Like that. Now you can pull up on this. And the hammer is now out. You can set the hammer aside as we won't be putting it back in the gun. All right, final step. We'll get you a pair of needle nose or anything like that. And you're just gonna grab this little itty bitty pin and pull it out. When you pull it out, make sure you're covering it. I did not expect mine to spring out like that that quick. Fortunately, mine is just off camera here, right there. All right, we're gonna be replacing this so we can go ahead and remove that and the spring there. Set those aside. All right, at this point, we can now take our new hammer kit. We're gonna open it up. The hammer kit includes a new firing pin, a new firing pin spring, two reduced trigger return springs, as well as the hammer. Okay. And there's a nice new hammer. Looks good. This is clearly marked, one for carry and duty and the other for competition. So we are gonna use the competition one. Pull that out. And we're also going to be using the extended firing pin and the firing pin return spring. Now the easiest way to do this is just put this onto the firing pin. And notice that there are notches on the firing pin. You're gonna want the notches facing towards you so you can get this little pin back in here. So we're gonna put this back in the slot there. Just like that. Excuse me, I said that wrong. You're gonna want this to go in there just like that. That's just so you can get this pin back in there. So you're gonna need to put some slight pressure on the firing pin just so you can get that pin back in there. And that's just a press fit, it just sits in there just like that. <clears throat> All right, next, we're ready to put this hammer back in. What I like to do is take a little bit of grease and grease the hammer before it goes back in the gun. And this is what I would do regardless of whether or not it's a new hammer or I'm putting the old hammer back in there. Why am I doing this? I just prefer because stainless on stainless um, if you ever put stainless against stainless, it will actually cause the, to everything to lock up and actually gall the metal. So you always wanna make sure it's well lubricated and I prefer to use grease. So we're now ready to put this back in the gun. Go and line it up over the pin. And as we're doing that, you're gonna once again have to pull back on your cylinder release just so that it's out of the way. And 
and make sure the hammer is all the way down. Okay, now that we've got that back in the gun, we can go ahead and take our trigger. I'm going to take and apply some, just some grease to this as well. And any contact surface that the hammer might have with the trigger. All right, at this point, this is where I go back in the gun. Now when we do this, this notch of the trigger has to match with this notch in the hammer. Now it is easiest to go ahead and pull your cylinders, uh, cylinder release back a little bit and pull the hammer back just a smidge like that. This allows you to fit this in without interference. So you got to pull the hand back. Just like that. And make sure that everything lined up and everything does look good. So we should be good. All right. Now you're going to go ahead and put this back in. This is the housing for your um, trigger return spring. So we're going to go ahead and insert the trigger return spring. There's a little dimple here. It matches up with the bar that's in the trigger. So you're going to want to line those up. Now this does slide back and forth inside your frame. So we're going to have to go ahead and take just a little bit of grease and grease any contact points that this has within the frame. Now we can go ahead and place it in here just like that. Now the fun part, you're going to have to compress the spring until you can get it over the notch in the frame that retains that spring. So I usually take and press it in with a flathead screwdriver. And then as I'm pushing it in, I'm pushing down over that pin, just like that. Okay, so at this point, we can go ahead and put the main hammer spring back into the gun. So you're just going to hook it just like so. Go ahead and take your flathead and I usually prefer to put tension on the spring. Not all the way just yet, just a little enough, just a little enough to um, hold it in there so it doesn't fall out. All right, you may notice that I didn't put the the um, the block, the um, hammer block back in the gun. It's because um, well, it's going to be a competition, so really, I don't even think this works with this hammer now. So there's really no point in putting it back in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull back on this so we can function test. and make sure that nothing's binding to make sure that everything's fitting in there properly. And it seems that in my case, everything's working just fine. So at this point, we can go ahead and put our cylinder back in. I'm gonna take just a little bit of grease, not much. And just grease this just a smidge and we're going to put our cylinder back in just like that make sure it's all the way forward make sure it locks in there like it should everything looks good so we go ahead and put our side plate back on now when you do this make sure this little notch 
goes under first, just like that. And then you should be able to press your side plate right on, no problems. If it needs a little encouragement, you can take and just tap it on with your flathead screwdriver. At this point, you can put this screw back in the front, make sure you get the correct screws in the correct places, especially the front one, as that is most crucial. All right, now all our screws are tightened. The final one to tighten will be your main spring screw. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten it all the way down. Snug it up. And now let's try it. While we're at it, we might as well go ahead and test and see how much, if any, the trigger's been lightened. So I'm at seven, seven pounds, 10 ounces. Six pounds, 14 ounces. Six pounds, 14 ounces. Seven pounds, seven ounces. Now, if we wanted to get this even lighter, there actually is a way to do that. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you guys. I actually have a wolf spring here. That's their main spring. My warning would be in using a different or an aftermarket hammer spring, especially a lighter one, such as the Wolf, is if you get your trigger poundage down too too light, then you may end up running into issues where your um, your gun is actually light striking, where it's hitting the hitting the primer, but it's not hitting it hard enough to set the round off. And that's always one one problem you may run into with a revolver in getting your hammer too light or your trigger poundage too light. So, but if you want to go this route, you can. Basically, just disassemble the gun just like I did previously. Tap on it. Side plate springs right out of there. Go ahead and remove this one. Put in the wolf spring. There we go. Go ahead and put a little bit of pressure on the, against the spring. Reinstall the side plate, just as I did earlier. Screws go back in the same places. And the trigger poundage is now six pounds, eight ounces, six pounds, 14 ounces. Well, I overdid that one a little bit, but 711, 74, 63. So, I mean, that, that breaks it down to an average about six pounds, 14 ounces, which is almost perfect. Um, I found that anything below four, I mean, you can get it there. You can adjust this screw out and reduce the trigger pull even more. But um, I found that the more you do that, the greater the risk you run of um, well, getting the trigger too light. And then the gun doesn't fire and function reliably. At this point, we can just go ahead and put your grips back on. And then we'll be ready to put the mount and the red dot on. Feels pretty good. All right. Now we can go ahead and, help, we'll go ahead and open up this. See what we got here. So there's the mount. It's a nice, nice matte finish. And then we've got um, mounting screws here. Thankfully, this bag will work perfectly putting all the old parts into the bag. 
and we can label that and set it aside. Okay, so here we've got these look like our mounting screws for the optic and these will be the screws for mounting the plate to the gun. Now, I went ahead and already cleaned out my screw holes. Um, I used some PB Blaster and just cleaned them up real nice. That way they're good and clean. Everything lines up perfectly. It's just fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put a little bit of thread locker on each one of these screws. And you might wonder why I'm doing that. I just don't want the dot to come loose in the middle of competition. So we're just going to put a drop on each one. Insert it into the gun. Alright. So with the mounting plate on the gun, we can now go ahead and put the red dot on. Now they've included these two small plastic, I don't know if they're plastic or rubber, they feel like plastic, two little posts, those will go in the front slots which match with the front slots on the dot, and then the dot can be put on there. Okay, so what I've decided to do is I'm just going to use the dot screws that came with the optic. Um, the ones from Hollow Sun, the longest one they've got seems to work. So we're going to go ahead and use theirs instead. So I'm going to get that screw started. I'm going to drop the other one in, get that one started, and then we can tighten them up. And their screws are, are um, Torx, and they include the little thing. So if you use the Hollow Sun, just use the Hollow Sun um, screws. And it should mount just like that. So now we have a 986 Pro in 9mm that is ready to go out and test. Make sure the hammer, uh, hammers and triggers heavy enough to sit off the rounds and we'll be good to go so now we can just go side it in and that is how you install the apex um, some guns may require fitting um, in my case the two that i've put in both in this gun and the 686 plus um, have not required any fitting so that's how you put one in thanks for watching guys um, maybe next video i can go ahead and take this out the range and uh, do some shooting with it